Hello, sixth grade gorillas. This week's literacy center is going to focus on biography and autobiography exposition. What is a biography? A biography is a written account of another person's life. What is an autobiography? An autobiography is the history of a person's life written or told by that person. So, who could you write a biography about? The answer, anyone. It could be someone from history, like Benjamin Franklin or Cleopatra. It could be someone famous today, like Michael Jordan or Oprah. It could be someone you know, like your brother or grandmother. Who could you write an autobiography about? There's only one answer for this one. You. An autobiography is told by you about you. I'm going to read an example of a biography. There will also be a podcast posted on our website with an example of a type of autobiography, a memoir, and more information about writing an autobiography. You will listen to that podcast for tomorrow's Literacy Center, and then Wednesday we'll begin work on your, on your own biography or autobiography. I'm going to read aloud from Kay Winter's book, Abe Lincoln, The Boy Who Loved Books. You may follow along with the book provided at your center table. In the wilds of Kentucky, 1809, a boy was born. His mother called him Abraham, his last name Lincoln. His bed was made from corn husks, his covers skins from bears, his cabin built with logs from towering trees. Abe said his first words in that one room cabin, took his first steps on a hard dirt floor. A wood fire chased the cold and cooked corn pone. The door swung open, shut on leather hinges. A tiny window looked out on his world. When he was two, his folks packed their few goods, moved Abe and sister Sarah to Knob Creek. The Cumberland Trail ran close to their new cabin. Abe saw peddlers, pioneers, politicians, traders, slaves pass by. As Abe grew, he talked to travelers, heard where they'd been, where they were going. He saw their world was wider than his own. His ideas stretched, his questions rose, his dreams were stirred. At school, he worked with numbers one to 10. He shaped his letters A to Z with a charcoal stick. He wrote them down day in, day out, in school, at home, in dust, in snow, on logs of wood. The letters cast a magic spell. He loved to learn. His parents had no schooling, but when day was done, the family sat close by the fire. His mother shared the Bible stories she knew by heart. His father spun yarns, told jokes, and made them laugh. When Abe was seven, the family moved again. The Lincolns set out one December morning, their bits and pieces piled on two stout horses. They walked and rode a hundred miles to Indiana. They crossed the Ohio River on a makeshift ferry. Abe helped his father hack a trail through forests thick with trees and tangled vines, until at last they came to land they claimed. No cabin waited at Little Pigeon Creek. Instead, a half-faced camp of branches, twigs, and logs was where they had to stay. One side opened wide to wilderness. The family kept the wood piles stacked. The blazing fire scared off wild animals that roamed the woods. Bears growled. Wolves howled. Panthers screamed. Abe shivered. Dark was a fearsome time. Then settlers came to help the family raise a home. Now Abe and Sarah had a loft to call their own. Abe loved to climb up to his sleeping place. But snow and wind blew through the cabin's cracks. The outside crept indoors and iced the walls. Just once, Abe shot a turkey in the woods, but not again. He vowed he would not take the breath from living things. When Abe was eight, he helped his father clear their land. He learned to swing an axe and fell the trees. But he longed to learn from books, go back to school. When Abe turned nine, dark days fell upon him. Milk sickness, milk sickness took his mother to her grave. Abe whittled pegs to put in her pine coffin, his grief so deep he could not speak her name. A year limped by. His father went to find a wife. He brought back a widow with three children, her heart so wide she took in Abe and Sarah as her kin. And she owned books. She let Abe read when chores were done. Once more, their house of logs became a home. She sent the children back to school. Abe wore two short buckskins and a raccoon cap. He drew his letters with a turkey buzzard quill. Abraham Lincoln, his hand and pen, 
he will be good, but God knows when. He learned to add, subtract on planks of wood. But most of all, he loved to read, win spelling bees, spin yarns, tell tales. When school was shut, Abe hired out to farmers. His father kept the earnings for the family. Abe split rails, dug wells, chopped trees. But all the while he worked, he yearned to learn. To anyone who'd listen, he liked to say, the things I want to know are in books. Once rain leaked through the cabin roof and soaked a book he borrowed. For three hot days, Abe pulled stalks of corn in his friend's field to pay him back. When Abe plowed, a book sat in his back pocket. At each row's end, he'd take it out and read. His horse would wait for him to turn the page. The neighbors shook their heads and called him lazy. They did not understand the bookish boy. Abe knew he must move on, out of the wilderness. Splitting rails and plowing land was not his dream. At 19, he pulled a flatboat down the river, saw people in places beyond backwoods, saw black men, women, and their children bound in chains. A sign above their heads read, Auction Block. A life for sale, like hatchet, axe, or plow? Abe knew it was unjust to own another. New Salem, Illinois was where Abe settled. A hundred folk or more lived in this place. He hired on to run the general store. Folks like to tell that once he overcharged someone six cents, but Honest Abe walked miles to give it back. Even here, Abe was asked to prove his worth with brawn, not brains. The owner of Abe's store set up a wrestling match against the leader of a wild and rowdy gang. Reluctantly, Abe took Jack Armstrong on. Some said that Abe pinned Jack on the floor. Others swore Armstrong beat Abe with a trick. But when Jack saw Abe's strength, he shook his hand, and they became close friends in years to come. By firelight, he studied law without a teacher. Soon he became a lawyer in the courts. Abe saw that words could free or jail a man. He found that words could change the way folks thought. When politics began to call his name, Abe aimed his words at wrongs he'd like to right. Friends said that he should run for public office. He tried for Congress first, and then the Senate. At last he ran for the highest office in the land. Abraham Lincoln, born in a log cabin, child of the frontier, head in a book, elected our 16th president. From the wilderness to the White House, he learned the power of words and used them well. So, today we learned about biographies. In your daily learning log, please explain in a sentence or two what a biography is. If you were to write a biography, what is the first thing that you would do? What is the first thing you would do if your subject was a historical person? What is the first thing you would do if your subject was someone you knew? Research and interviews are the two best ways to get to know your subject. Interviewing someone you know is easy and fun and will probably get you the most reliable information. For someone you cannot interview, research and reliable sources books from the library or websites, for example, will probably be the best way to get information. For the remainder of center time, use your daily learning log to brainstorm someone you would like to write a biography about. If you already know, begin research on that person. The website listed on the biography and autobiography assignment sheet for help with writing biographies may be a lot of help in this process. It gives examples, highlights the writing process, and allows you to publish online. You're more than welcome to submit your story on the Scholastic site. But for your grade, we will be submitting your stories on our own class website. If you have any questions about biographies, please come ask Ms. Adams. For now, good luck brainstorming and researching.